Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining in today. Today we are starting a new season of talks, and in this season we are going to focus on hernias. In one of the first videos I ever made, or for YouTube, I discuss what hernias actually are, and I'm going to leave a link in the bottom for you to have a look at your leisure what hernias actually are. Today we are talking about a very common type of hernia called epigastric hernia. Now, what is an epigastric hernia? Epigastric hernia is a hernia which arises from our epigastrium. So this is the portion of the abdomen that we call the epigastrium. That is the right side of our rib cage, which we can feel in the front. That is the bottom of our breastbone. That is left side of the rib cage, and that is our umbilicus. And this is our groin down here. So the area above the umbilicus and up to the breastbone in the middle is called the epigastrium. So any hernias that arise between the breastbone and above the umbilicus, usually in the middle, are called epigastric hernias. This type of hernia can happen in men and women and can happen in adults or children. However, in my experience, it is more common in men and it is more common in adults. So what usually happens in an epigastric hernia? Where does the hernia comes out from. So again, a diagram of the abdomen. This is the right side of our rib cage, left side of the rib cage. In the middle is our umbilicus or the belly button. You might have seen the muscle in the middle, which what, what we call the rectus abdominis muscle, normally known as the six pack. In the bodybuilders or people who are very muscular, you can see the lines across these muscles, which are quite prominent. There is a muscle on the right side, which is called the right rectus abdominis. And there's a muscle on the left side called the left rectus abdominis. It starts from the rib cage at the top and goes down to the pubic bone at the bottom. And it comes in the middle, the right side and the left side come in the middle and they fuse with a very strong sheath of muscle called the Linea alba. Linea alba means linea means line, alba means white. So usually when the surgeons operate on a patient, when they go down after cutting the skin, when they get to the muscle, this line usually looks white. And it's a very strong area through which things can't go in and out easily. However, in some individuals, the fusion of the two muscles the right rectus and the left rectus is incomplete. So the line will come and then there is a defect because they have not fused together completely. Sometimes there's usually only one defect between the breastbone and the belly button. Sometimes there can be more than one defect. So this person has got one defect and a second defect over here. Or sometimes the individual can have a very large defect. Most commonly these hernias are very, very small. And when they're so small, the patient themselves don't know that they actually have a hernia. The commonest part that comes out of these hernias is a bit of fat that our tummy contains. That's called a preperitoneal fat. That comes out and usually there is no risk of strangulation or any other problem with those tiny hernia. Many patients, as a matter of fact, don't even know they have a hernia. However, the problem arises when the defect is a bit larger and fat comes out or even part of our intestine comes out and can't go back in. The reason that can happen is because the hole or the sheath that is making the hole is very firm, is very tight. It's like having a very tight ring around the finger. So if you have a very tight ring around the finger, you can't take the ring off and the finger gets stuck and starts losing its blood supply if the ring is very tight and when start losing his blood supply, starts getting swollen and swollen and the ring becomes even tighter and tighter. Eventually what will happen if the ring is not cut, then the finger will lose his blood supply and will die because of gangrene. Same thing happens over here. Because the ring of this defect is quite tight, if a large portion of the fat comes out or a bit of the intestine comes out and can't go back in, the ring becomes tighter and tighter because that part of intestine or fat gets swollen. And when it gets swollen, 
it can't go back in even more and this gets tighter and tighter around our intestine or that fat and it can lose its blood supply and cause strangulation and that is a very serious condition to have. So how are epigastric hernias diagnosed? Patient gives a very classical history of a lump in the epigastrium which can be painful at times. At times the patient has no symptoms and it is discovered only on routine examination. However, certain other type of lumps like fatty lumps or lumps coming from nerves called neurofibromas can feel similar to a epigastric hernia. Ultrasound scan can confirm the diagnosis of an epigastric hernia. So it's a relatively simple diagnosis. So what is the treatment of epigastric hernias? Epigastric hernias don't disappear by themselves. They will require some treatment or the other. If they're very, very small and totally asymptomatic and been there for a number of years, not causing any harm to the patient, then they can be left alone, in my view. If, however, the hernia is slightly bigger and is causing symptoms, the main symptom being pain in the hernia, which means there is a risk of strangulation or obstruction, then that hernia should be fixed. And the fixation is done by surgery. It's a straightforward operation. Very small defects can be just sutured together. Larger defects can require a mesh repair. Mesh is an artificial netting material which is put on top of the hernia after the hernia has been pushed back inside, the mesh is stitched in place, so the area becomes strong and nothing comes out of that hole. So those are the main treatments for epigastric hernia. Asymptomatic small hernias, no treatment required. Slightly bigger hernias or hernias which are causing pain, discomfort, etc. Even if they're very small, they will require surgery. There is one more condition that I should mention with epigastric hernias. Although I do not consider this as a hernia, it's called divarication of recti, in which what happens, the right rectus muscle and the left rectus muscle above the umbilicus, they don't fuse into linea alba. The white line in the middle is not present. And the muscles, they diverge from each other, so they go further away from each other. So when the patient lifts their head, trying to get off the bed from lying down position, or they sneeze or they cough, they lift weights, the middle of the tummy, it bulges because instead of having a very strong sheath in the middle, they have a very thin sheath and the thin sheath bulges forwards like a hump. And that hump, many patients mistake for a hernia. It usually totally asymptomatic, cause no trouble whatsoever. And if it's diagnosed or picked up, can be just well left alone and does not require any treatment. I hope you found this video informative and if you did then please do give us a thumbs up and please remember to subscribe as it helps our educational channel. Thanks for watching and until next time I see you very soon. Take care.